Good everyone, I hope you guys have an amazing day. So what I'm going to do today, I will uh, talk a bit more about the process mapping language. So in the in in the last episode, right, I talked about process mapping and explained to you in, in a simple way what process mapping is about. So today what I'm going to do, right, I'll talk about the language of process mapping, which is pretty important. Because obviously, if you're uh, trying to do a process diagram, you need to follow a little bit of a standard, right? Although I would say that no one owns the, the standard regulation for uh, defining process mapping, but we normally use a term called uh, UPN, that's the Universal Process Notation. But like I said, right, no one owns this convention or standard, right? You can define the way you want, but there are certain rules which is normally accepted uh, across the landscape, it doesn't matter if you're doing for a software or if you're doing for a manufacturing industry or for healthcare, right? Uh, the normally the it's it's a common understanding, right? You follow if you follow the UPN, that you have a you know set of expectations, right? Uh, so the few things I just wanted to mention. So as you can see, that this is the fancy looking, um, the, the the box looks like. I mean, it's just one of the box out of many. So what happens, you often start with the verb, like, you know, customers say, initiate the process, then who's responsible, could be a customer, could be uh, a sales rep, or could be a support rep, and what systems I use. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, I've seen this as an optional, it's not always the case. And you can also attach the document and stuff to support this, right? So this is like a, uh, like a process, right? One process, a customer uploading a ticket, right? Or customer creating a case. And this will, will be, you can see it like an uploading a screenshot of the issue, okay? So who's responsible? It's the customer. And then what happens next? You know, sales rep picks up the ticket and opens the, the screenshot and try to troubleshoot, all right? So you usually, you know, it's a standard that you should not clutter your uh, screen, right? You should put like 10 process maps just to make it simple. And if you think that it's going to grow bigger, uh, subdivide into modular forms, right? So that can point to a different one. You can put it as a sub processes, right? Um, so, and also it's important to know that who, um, so Trailhead mentioned a five points, like it's no more, uh, you know, according to Trailhead, according to Salesforce, you should not have more than 10 activity box on the screen, which is great. Uh, drill down the activity box to the lower level to details, uh, uh, to describe the details, and you have to attach the supporting document, which is great. Uh, view and edit control by access right, yeah, which is cool. And it's good to have a version control right because you might change it, so it's always good to be in a version control way. Now, this is a very simple uh, example. Let me let me Google it for you, and you know I'll show you what other looks like. Right? Ah, it's a, it's a good exercise, right? To just to uh, to Google it. So, I mean, to be honest, from my experience, I've used uh, UPN, um, and I've used another one as well. There are there are a few I'm going to discuss, but out of which only two I've used because I'm not a business analyst, right? I've done the solution architecture space, but and I've I've did a process mapping, but I'm not like I said, I'm not a BA. I I don't do BA stuff much, like you know. So, but. That shouldn't be the case. That shouldn't be. That should not be a problem. Um, so let's look at this one, right? This boy seems pretty easy. Okay, so this is how you know the UPN kind of looks like. Okay, maintaining costs and billing rates. Who's whose responsibility is this? Okay, let's start over here. Win the project. Whose responsibility is it? VP of sales. Then. Once you win it, what happened? The scope of the project, right? Who's responsible as project manager or a product owner, right? Sign contract, then what's going to happen? So this is a entire, you know, you can say a simple way of UPN you can represent. And it looks simple, right? Something similar you might have seen as well, you know. So if you are a business analyst, right, if you're starting out as a BA, then I would say that pay attention to UPN. Try to follow what someone has done and maybe use a similar you know, pattern, right? It's always good to have consistent uh, way of doing things in a company rather than having you know, one BA doing it a different way, another BA doing it a different way. When the stakeholder looks at the information, they were like, 
Um, that's interesting, but it's very complicated and confusing, right? That's exactly not what you want to offer. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, if I say, for instance, if I look at this right now, I find it pretty simple to understand, right? They went in the project, and who's responsible to this? And once you've been a project, you scope it, and then you pass on to different stage, right? Uh, so, anybody looking at this diagram will be able to figure out somehow a high level view of the project, right? That's exactly what we want. So that's why, you know, having a common language that's a UPN matters, okay? Now, that's great. Now, if you don't want to go into that level, if you wanted to uh, use a different kind of a diagram that's called a capability model, like, you know, for instance, uh, Salesforce often comes up with a capability model, right? Like for Service Cloud and Sales Cloud, what they offer. So it's like an overview, high-level process area you can talk about. It's usually used for scoping, specific area that you're mapping. Um, I've used it a few times. Um, so, yeah, it's an interesting one. But that being said, right, if you think that you want to give more detailed view of your process, right, and let's say your, uh, you know, overview, this is not going to suffice, and even this is not really helpful, uh, UPN, then you can drill down to a nitty-gritty stuff into the extensive detail. That's where the detailed process map, you can de define your process, sub-process, and sub-sub-process, right? And different model of process, you can explain it using this, using different flowchart and other kind of diagrams, right? Okay, SIPOC is, I haven't used it, but let's show you an example of SIPOC. Um, so if you, so usually SIPOC is used if you wanted to, um, you know, drill down the key, uh, actors, right? Or you can say key elements of the process. So SIPOC is itself the name. S stand for supplier. I stand for input. P stand for process. Uh, o stand for output. C stand for customer, right? So let me show you a SIPOC example. Uh, just to, so I, you understand what I'm talking about. Right. Okay. So let's pick up one example, right? Let's stick up this one. Okay, so this is like if you don't. So the reason why you do this, uh, you go for this option, right? You go for this uh, template, or you go for this diagram, because if you want, if you don't want to uh, talk about nitty gritty aspect of your process, or if you don't want to even draw anything, right? You just wanted to talk about the main players and the and the key responsibility. Then this is the best way to do it, right? For instance, supplier. Responsible supplier, right? Supplier raw material, sources, manufacturers, and what all suppliers include, so all kind of stuff. Inputs, manpower. Uh, this is not a really good example, I'm afraid. I'd rather choose a different one. I didn't really like it, so let me look for another one. Yeah, how about this one? Nah, that's the same shit. So, okay. All right. Okay, so this one looks a little bit okay. So, who supplies the process input? Like suppliers, the consumer, retail customers, CRM systems, all of this. You know, who supplies this stuff? Right. This is how it comes. Inputs. What are the inputs? You can get a phone order, a fax order. How do you? Go? It's. I think this is talking about the restaurant-based system, right? Okay. Who are the suppliers? Right. Your customers consumers, your retail customers, you know, comes in here, and then process, enter the phone, and fax order, response to technical support, um, kind of stuff, right? And what's the process output, orders entered, and who received the output as a consumer? So, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to only understand the key players, then this is, I would say that this is the best way to go for it. But like I said, I haven't used it, right, before, so... And then we have the value stream map. Value stream map is like if you if you wanted to know where is is the bottleneck, then this is uh, a better way to find out. Like for instance, a customer enter an information, right? Or customer enter a log a ticket, right? And now from a logging state to uh, to to someone to look at it, if the how much time that takes, that's if you wanted to figure that out, then value stream map will be a great 
option for you because let's say you know if I'm a customer I log a ticket I log a support case and let's say I log a support case on Monday and if I got a response back let's say on Friday that means a four days delay right so that's an opportunity to improve so that kind of a bottleneck uh, this process map can help to clear uh, like but like I said right I haven't used it I've seen a couple of beers using it but this is one of the use of it, right now this is one thing right this is one of the challenge I often have right to teach a course which is not something really closely related to my day-to-day -day activity right I mean obviously you know this uh, user designer certification is a great certification um, and I have done lots of user experience kind of things in across different roles I perform but BA role is one thing I haven't done really well right because I'm I was not really interested in the business analyst role and I felt this role was super boring so I never used to attempt to even bother with it yeah I do get it like the requirement gathering uh, understanding the requirement I've done those kind of things uh, but the BA right working on the process map uh, I even done the process map right but the working out the detail analysis uh, that's a kind of painful experience I'm not talking just from the Salesforce space uh, you know my in my previous life I was not a Salesforce guy I was you know I was a C sharp guy I was a C plus plus guy uh, I even worked on different domains right retail banking you name it right so we used in banking was banking domain was interesting right there the BAs were pretty pushy even the you need to have the process map word to word everything you change uh, you got to have a process for that they're very very picky about it because you know bank deals with financial transaction and they have to be picky um, but that being said I was not involved in detail value stream map or uh, for that matter uh, SIPOC I was involved in um, uh, UPN right writing a overview process map for one of the the software uh, like AML stuff I built anti-money laundry I built that stuff when I was working for a bank and when I was doing a software for the law society for the lawyers I did that as well because New Zealand uh, 2018 um, I was involved in building AML uh, for one of, I mean I implemented AML for one of the uh, the pract law based practice management system uh, because it was mandatory, it was a regulation change happened in New Zealand, and I was working for a, a company who was manufacturing uh, the law-based software. Right? It was not in software. Uh, it was sorry. It was not in Salesforce. It was in uh, .NET and web-based tech. But that being said, we were also using uh, Salesforce along the side. So I was doing two projects: one in a different technology, one is in Salesforce. It was pretty interesting because you know I like to you know do different things. I get very bored if I have to work on the same tech every day. I don't really like it. <laughs> so I normally switch things, right? I work on different tech in the days. So which is great, you know. So yeah, so that's one of the reasons why I'm saying, right? I haven't personally seen getting Cyborg used. If you've been a business analyst, if you use it, you know, just do let me know. I mean, I will be keen to know your experience and thought about this Uh uh, this uh, specific uh, process map uh, language right so that being said I hope you enjoyed today's uh, uh, lecture my apologies that you know like I said I'm not a business analyst right so I couldn't really explain to to the detail level what a BA could do that but from an exam perspective what I've explained is is good as gold it will it will get you across the uh, shore so you just don't have to worry about that aspect uh, but from from your real life experience all I can say that right you got to practice right pick up an existing process which is not documented start documenting it right start with uh, a UPN and get it reviewed and then see if you wanted to add more stuff to it, right maybe uh, UPN and perhaps the detail process map these are the two ones which you'll be most likely be using in your day-to-day -day if you are a BI right I don't think so you will be using value uh, ma stream map very often unless there is a bottleneck and unless you think that your process needs to be changed so in that scenario yes value stream map will be useful so that being said I hope you guys have an amazing Monday adios